I have an article from the Huffington Post written by a gentleman named Christian Piat. He uh, titled the article, Four Reasons I Came Back to Church. And I'm going to be brief with his reasons, uh, mostly because he's brief, and they are just astoundingly kind of useless. Um, so he, he talks about how he was not part of his church for a long period of time. He apparently okay. was kind of raised in a semi-evangelical kind of way. Sure. And then went back to religion after 10 years. The four reasons that he gave are, one, found a community that defied Christian stereotypes. And he he went on to say that they would just basically, he, he went into a group that he enjoyed because of the fact that he could go in there, he could wear whatever he wanted, and never mm -hmm. once did he feel judged or scrutinized by others in the group. That's a reason to go back to church. Okay. That doesn't really speak at all to the truth of the church's claims. Right. Um, it makes it a nice place to hang out, but exactly. So, you know, so he found he found community in okay. that. I can and he and found okay. people he liked. That's. But going into a Christian church that defines Christian stereotypes, or, you know, that defies does, Christian does stereotypes, he, seems a bit. Does he list what he felt Christian stereotypes were? Not really. No. Okay. All right. Um, then he, he continues on that his number two was he found his voice. And when he says his voice, he means music. And so okay. he enjoyed the fact that there wasn't a production or there wasn't choir music, and he was encouraged to bring his guitar and just kind of, you know, jam. So kind of a very hippie-ish sounding sure. Christian uh, way to go. Um, so, But that's what he, he states is, is that he found his voice and that music for him was the... The opening to coming back to this church was found in music. So he found people he liked, and he plays guitar, mm -hmm. um, and they let him bring his guitar and play his guitar, so he gets to hang out with people he likes, and he gets to do something he likes to do. Right. Okay. Okay. Next, he found a deeper meaning. Okay. Um, he, he does talk about how that after 17 years, it got pretty old to hear these two themes. One, if you died tomorrow, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Mm -hmm. Or two, Jesus could come back any day. It could be today or tomorrow. You better get yourself right with God. Right. So he said he didn't, he didn't enjoy these kind of things. He, he, he stated that he doesn't need some sort of divine fire insurance policy. And I agree with that. And that's yeah. fair. That's... And so his real wrap up for, I found deeper meaning was... I was more interested in finding deeper meaning in this life rather than worrying so much about what comes after that. Okay. So that's his third reason. Okay. Um, his fourth reason, which is much the same, is he found a sense of belonging. And he states that for a lot of churches, that affirmation of belonging comes after you commit to membership as part of an institution. The problem for me was that I didn't really care about their institution. I only cared about the people. So he's kind of a humanist. Right. And that's it. Those are the reasons that he came back to church and became religious again. And apparently he, he actually writes um, Christian literature and, and, okay. and ministers and things of that nature. Now. now, it doesn't sound like this guy ever identified as an atheist. It sounds like he was one of the majority of Americans who would consider that he has a belief in God, but he just didn't go to church. He fell away from basically. it, just wasn't interested in it anymore. Um, it was basically because of the type of church and the, all the, the the kind of more consistent rituals and things that you know you right. would define as the Christian stereotypes. He he mentions those a little bit in this article. So it does seem that the, the big, large production churches was something that didn't agree with him, and he found this kind of more um, you know social circle type of church, and that's what brought him back. And... and I don't have, I guess, any animosity towards uh, Mr. Piot, but I think that it's worth noting that pretty well all the things that he listed, you know, one, he found people that he liked, uh, he could do, mu he played music, which is something he likes to do, and they encouraged that. Um, he found, what was it, he found his voice, which... No, well, the voice was the music. He found deeper meaning and a sense of belonging, which are really the same right. thing. Right, so he found... Uh, um, he found that it wasn't the institution, it was the people. Right. And I think what's interesting about that is to note that basically all of his reasons could be good reasons for joining any group, religious or yeah. otherwise. And I think wanting to be around people you like, wanting to do things you like, wanting to feel welcomed and that you belong with those people is things that every human wants. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't in any way speak to the truth of 
the claims of the religion that right. he's in. It sounds like he just wanted a social group, and I'm happy that he found a place that he's happy in, yeah, and, and that just, he enjoys. I mean, it's just interesting because it's like if, it, yeah, that's all that that converted him was this ability. Not converted him, but made him feel comfortable was just that he found a more comfortable group of people that thought more the way he did and things of that nature, which is great. But to kind of like the way that the article starts is this like this is why i came back to church and, right. and things like that it's like we well, didn't really find anything even even when he discusses the deeper meaning he doesn't point out anything you know um particular he even notes at the very end of it that he's like i it's just in a note of many things but he just says i didn't care what denomination the church was part of right so and he it doesn't, clearly doesn't care about the doctrine right. or the rituals that you know would typically be right. established within a religion he's he cares well, about the people. And he says that for 17 years, they, you know, he got the two messages, which were basically the threat of hell. Right. Um, and he didn't, he didn't care to hear about that anymore. Like, that was not um, his interest. He was not interested in living this life just to prepare for possibly the next life. He was interested in making this life valuable, which um, is a... Goal most of us. Have. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's uh, atheists are often, uh, I will, I will say, even perhaps hundred percent of the time, interested in making this life as valuable as possible because it's the only life we know we're going to get. For sure. Um, so I, I applaud him for finding a place that he enjoys. I mean, we should all be so lucky, I suppose. That's true. Yeah, it's just I just wanted to point out the fact that that it, it, it's like even what made him feel comfortable and, and kind of reaffirmed his belief, none of it actually has anything to do with the belief itself or the right. claims. It's just the group that he found that he's comfortable in, mm -hmm. and somehow that reinforces the belief. Right. Without discussing the belief in any way. Right. Before. So, But it, it, makes, it makes it seem like, certainly at least in this case, that the only thing that religion has to offer is the same thing that any other human social group has to offer. Exactly. I'll cast out.